welcome back to our series Backgammon Basics here on Drag the Bar. I'm Bill Roberti, your instructor for the series. Now, last time in Episode 7, we looked at some typical doubling positions from all parts of the game. In this episode, we're going to look at a tough game between two good players in a tournament match. You're going to see a lot of the ups and downs of real backgammon, and you'll see how the players have to adapt to constantly changing game situations. Now, before we start, uh, let's talk a little bit about the differences between tournament play and cash game play. Now, cash game play in backgammon looks a lot like cash game play in poker. If you're playing someone heads up, you just play and you keep score until somebody quits, and then the winner pockets his profits. Uh, a backgammon chouette works kind of like a ring game in poker. Players can join the game, they can leave the game when they want, and when they leave, of course, they take their profits or losses with them. So the game continues even as individual players come and go. And in a, in a typical big city club, you might see a chouette start up in the evening after dinner and go on till the wee hours of the morning. Whereas at tournaments, uh, chouettes typically happen between rounds and they'll play until the players have to quit to get ready for the next round. Now, backgammon tournaments are somewhat similar to poker tournaments. Since the tournament has to finish in a definite time frame, players have to be eliminated on a regular basis. In poker, of course, the, the steadily rising blinds accomplish that. They enable you to keep getting rid of the players with low stacks and keep the tournament moving along. In backgammon, it's a little different. Players play matches to a fixed length, and at the end of the match, the loser gets knocked out. So each round, half the field gets eliminated until you're down to just two players who are playing a final match. The game we're going to look at today it was actually played in Lugano in Switzerland a few years ago. And for a while, Lugano hosted a world-class event every October, which attracted a lot of the, of the world's best players. Uh, in this particular match, which happened in the second round, uh, I was paired against Michael Myberg, who's a two-time winner of the World Championship. And the match was to 15 points. And I won the first game to take a 2 to nothing lead. And the game we're going to look at is actually game two of the match. So let's get started. Okay, now in this match, uh, I'm going to be the player with the black pieces, and Michael Myberg will be playing white. <clears throat> and as you can see, I win the opening roll with a 5-1, and I elect to play 13 down to 8, and then I split my back men 24-23, and that's a perfectly good way of playing uh, an opening 5-1. That's the way I usually play it. Now, it's, it's worth mentioning here that... Uh, in backgammon, the score of a match can actually affect the way you play your checkers. Right now, I, I'm leading this match 2-0 to 15, and that's not a big lead. That's actually a very small league lead. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play my, my checkers just about the same way I would in a cash game. But if I were trailing by a lot, let's say the score were... Uh, 10 to nothing for my opponent, uh, that would have an effect on how I played. In that case, I'd be more interested in, in making sharper plays that were perhaps a little more likely to win a gammon. And in that case, my preferred play would actually be this, uh, 13, 8, 6, 5. If I can get the 5 point, I get a very strong game. Uh, I get a game with some gammon chances, and if I'm way behind in the match, uh, that matters a lot more than it normally does. But uh, since this is very close to the beginning of the match, and really my lead is insignificant, uh, it doesn't really have any effect, and I'm just playing essentially as though I were in a cash game. So with the 5-1, I play 13-8 and 24-23. Now, Myberg plays next, and he rolls a 2-1, uh, kind of an innocuous little roll. And one of the principles we learned in our little discussion on uh, the early part of the game was that you tend to more or less copy what your opponent did. Um, if he brings down builders, you tend to bring down builders. If he splits his back men, you tend to split your back men. And in fact, that's what Myberg does here. He, uh, with the deuce, he plays from 13 down to 11, 
and with his ace he splits his back men uh, from his 24 point to his 23 point. Of course on the diagram it's my one point to my two point. Now I shoot and I roll what's normally a very strong number in the opening, double sixes. Um, it's unfortunate that I split my back checkers on the last roll because if I'd played some other ace of course I could now move both checkers these checkers would be together on the 24 point I could move them both out to the 18 which would give me a very strong anchor but I split them so I can't really do much good with them uh, but I still have a very good way to play it first I make my bar point by playing two men down from the midpoint with my first two sixes and then with the last two sixes I'm just going to start to attack here I'm going to play two checkers from the eight point down to the two point and make that point on White's head, put him up on the bar. So even though I didn't get to, to make an advance anchor, this is a very strong shot. It gives me a nice little starting position here. I've made my seven point, made my two point. I've got White on the bar, so things are going my way right for now. And now I really catch a lucky break. Uh, my bird rolls a 6-2, and of course the six point is blocked, the two point is blocked, so he can't move, he has to stay on the bar, and this gives me a very nice little advantage right off the bat. And I don't waste any time trying to exploit that advantage. The first thing I do before I roll again is I take the doubling cube and I immediately offer it to my opponent at two. Now, at first glance, this might look a little frisky. I, I only have a two-point board. It shouldn't be too hard for Myberg to bring his checker in from the bar next turn. But what I have going for me, which is very important in these early blitz situations, is I have a lot of checkers here in the attacking zone. I have a lot of spare checkers I can move to try to pound away at White's game. If you'll notice, I can attack with all three of these checkers on the six point, and really all four of these outside checkers, as far as I'm concerned, are attackers as well. I'm, I'm not really going to try to win this game by relying on this little prime I have here. I want to throw all these checkers into the assault and see if I can't just close white out. So the fact I only have a two-point board, that counts a little against me, but having seven checkers here, two on the eight, two on the seven, three more spares on the six, having seven checkers to attack with is a very strong formation. It gives me what should be a very good attack. So this is actually quite a good double. And here Myberg makes what I, I think is actually a slight error. He takes the double. Um, you, I think you should pass this actually. Um, Black, when Black has this many attacking checkers around, your, your situation gets very dangerous very quickly. And even though Black's board doesn't appear to be that strong, Virtually every number he rolls is going to put that second white checker up on the bar next turn, and he'll have a lot of ways to, to cover and to keep making points. So this, even though the double might have looked a little frisky, it's actually stronger than it looks, and I think Myberg should actually have given up here. However, he's a courageous player. You don't, you don't win a couple of world championships without being willing to take a chance now and then. So he decides to accept the cube at two, and the game goes on. Now I shoot, and of course I'm, I'm looking to hit white on the one point with pretty much anything I roll, but I roll actually a really good number. 6-5 uh, not only hits on the one, it actually makes the one point. So I move one checker from the seven, one checker from the six down to the one. I put white on the bar, and I make the one point. So now I'm very, very happy. My double looks really strong, and uh, Myberg is probably wishing at this point that he'd actually given it up. Now he shoots. He desperately needs to get somebody in from the bar now, and he rolls an okay number. Uh, he had a few numbers that got both checkers in. He had a few numbers that danced, but 6-4 is pretty good. It gets one checker in from the bar, enters it here on my four point, so he's still surviving. Now I shoot. Uh, of course, what I want to roll here is uh, some combination of 4, 3, and 2, so I can make the four point or even just any 4, 3, and 2, and I'll hit loose on this point. Unfortunately, I roll 6, 5, which is not nearly as good 
uh, as it was last turn. It actually doesn't do much of anything great over here. I can't hit him. I can't make a point. What I can do is improve the position of my back checkers. So with the 6-5, notice what I do is I move 24 to 18, then 23 to 18. I get this anchor out here on the 18 point, which of course is worth something. Now, in a blitz type game, you're, you're really not looking to anchor. That's not your your main game plan. You're looking to hit blots and make points and then what you'd like to do ideally is just close white out and then your back checkers can saunter home as they want. But if it's all you've got, it's all you've got, so at least this gives me some sort of asset which might be useful later. And <clears throat> fortunately for me, I, I catch a real break here. White shoots and rolls another lousy number, 6-1. So the one point is blocked, the six point is blocked. He can't bring his checker from the bar in, so I get a little reprise there, even though I rolled a bad number, he rolled an even worse one. So now it's my turn again. I've got a lot of good shots here. I can hit him inside with any combination of fours, threes, and twos. I've also got fours to hit this blot out here, so I've got a lot of good numbers. Unfortunately, I come up with six, six, which is actually pretty terrible. Um, not only doesn't it do anything good, but it's actually going to force me to start killing checkers deep in my home board, and those checkers won't ever be able later on to be used to make my board up. So this is pretty bad. Um, what I do is I pull two checkers down from 13 to 7, and then I bury one checker down on the one point, bury another checker down on the two point. A uh, pretty terrible shot. I'm still okay. I've still got things I can do next, but that really killed two of my checkers down here, and that hurt a lot. Okay, now Myberg shoots, and he rolls a 6-2. Uh, so this game is really <clears throat> turning into an example of uh, when bad rolls happen to good players. Uh, again, the two points blocked, the six points blocked, white can't enter, so he's got to stay on the bar one more time, and I have another chance to try to put him away. Okay, now, as before, I'm looking for a four, a three, a two. I need a four over here. That's uh, three quarters of my numbers, really, are all very, very good. Even a roll like double one is very, very good, or even double fives, which brings these checkers around to here. Um, unfortunately, I come up with a five one. <clears throat> which is another poor shot. And about all I can do with it, I can start these back checkers moving. I don't like breaking my anchor, but it's really sort of all, the only good five I have. <clears throat> then with the one, I pick up the blot on the eight point, so at least he can't get hit. And <clears throat> now I'm really just hoping that white stays out for a while. Okay, well, white has danced three times in the last four rolls. Uh, I can't really expect him to dance forever, and sure enough, uh, Myberg shows some signs of life and actually rolls a good number from the bar, comes in with a 6-4, so he uses the 4 to enter, and then with the 6, he takes a checker from his midpoint and hits me on his bar point here. So I go back to the bar, and Myberg is down there having hit me, and now White's actually starting to get a pretty good position. Um, I'm on the bar, I've got to come in, White's starting to build up a blockade here, this checker on the midpoint's vulnerable, I've got to start uh, rolling something good here, or this game could really start to slip away from me. Now fortunately after rolling like a dunce the last couple of turns, I managed to come up with a pretty good shot, in fact a great shot, 6-5, it enters, and then with the six, I keep the checker going and hit white on the 14 point. So all in all, that's a great success. Now my back men are out again, and if white will just cooperate a little bit, maybe I can get these guys home and actually put my position back together again. Now white responds with a, a decent shot, not a great shot, but a decent shot. He rolls six, five. Five is forced. He's got to enter his checker on the one point, on the, sorry, on the five point. And then with the six, he's just going to make his bar point and get ready, build a little prime and get ready in case he hits a checker next turn. And that's pretty much a forced play. 
Now it's my turn to shoot, and I've, I've actually got a fair number of good rolls here. Uh, I'd love to roll a 2-1, making this point, or even something like another 6-5, where I can bring these two checkers down to the 8. Uh, unfortunately, I roll a 6-1, which is not my worst, certainly not one of my best. Um, what I decide to try to do here is make a little hay before white builds up his board at all. So I play the checker from 13 down to 7. Then with the ace, I hit him from 6 to 5. And what I'm trying to do here is make my 5 point, which will make coming home a lot easier. And at the same time, I want to, uh, if I'm going to take a chance in this game, I'd like to take it now before white can make any more points in his home board. So this, to me, looked like a pretty reasonable risk-reward. Now, I did have another play. If we go back to the starting position, uh, I could have played 7 to 1 and 14 to 13, which is safe for this turn, but it's going to be hard to get home from here. And of course, white has a free hand to start building up his board. So I didn't like that so much. So let's go back and I'll make the play that I actually made 13 to 7 and 6 to 5 hitting. And Myberg needs a good number. He gets a good number. He rolls a 3-2, which is a fine shot as far as he's concerned. And he enters on the three point and keeps it going two more pips and hits me off the five point. So once again, I'm back in White's home board looking to get out. Okay, now it's back to me. Um, uh, I'm starting to get in a little trouble here, um, but I roll a 2-1. That's okay. That's, uh, I can do some things with that. I'm going to enter on the 24 point with the 1. And then with the 2, I'm going to play 7-5 and try to keep up my plan of uh, hitting white and maybe buying some time to get my back checkers around. So we'll see if that works. Now Myberg shoots, and this time he rolls a 4-2. Uh, unfortunately for me, another pretty good shot. He comes in with a 4 which is forced, and then with the two, he's got another checker to pick up out here. So he hits from his midpoint down to his 11 point. And now, unfortunately, I've got two people back, but the good news is that he doesn't yet have a real strong prime. Uh, the bad news is he may get one in not too long a period of time. Okay, now I come back with a 4-2. And uh, that's actually uh, constructive for me. For the first time in a while, I'm able to build a new point. I enter with the 4 uh, onto the 21 point, and then with the 2, I play 7 to 5. And now at least my board has a little more teeth to it. And now a 5 4 for my Berg. Uh, that's a little bit of a break for me. He had a lot of numbers that pointed on the 21 point, he had some other numbers that made the 20 point. Uh, that would all have been very good for him. This isn't quite so good. What he does is he hops a checker out from the back, from uh, my 4 point to my 9 point, his 21 point to his 16 point. And then with the 4, he cleans up a bit. Safety's a blot by moving from his 11 point to his 7 point. So he just really has to wait with that move and then see what happens next turn. Now, my turn, I shoot, and I get a 3-2. Well, that's not too bad. I would have liked to have gotten a oh, double six or a uh, 6-3 hitting out here, but uh, this, this holds the fort for a while. With a 3, I'm clearly going to go 24-21, give myself an anchor, and get ready to move out here next turn. And then once I've done that, of course, my 2 is uh, unfortunately forced. I've got to go 7-5. It leaves a shot, but uh, White has to hit me with a three, and a lot of his threes are already good someplace else. For example, 3-1 uh, makes his five point, 3-2 makes his five point, 6-3 makes his 15 point. So there's a lot of duplication involved here, and it's not going to be that bad for me if White rolls a three, because it would have been, uh, he could have done something strong with it anyway. Now, Myberg shoots, and he's hoping to roll a 3, but instead he gets a 5-2. Uh, 
Uh, not his best shot by any means. Uh, really only one good thing he can do with it. He's going to play from my 9 point to his 14 and from the midpoint down and just make a new point here. It's not a blocking point because it's 7 away from the 21 point rather than 6 away or less. So it doesn't block any direct numbers, but it does give him a lot of it's a safe spot. Gives him a lot of ways now to make his 20 point pretty soon. Okay, and I come back with a 4-2, which uh, although it doesn't get my back checkers out, it's actually a pretty constructive number. I play, of course, 7-3 to three and 5-3. to three, And now I've got a real good board. I've got a 5-point board. So if white leaves a shot anywhere and I can hit it, uh, white's going to be in a lot of trouble. But that's really about all I can do on this side of the board now. From here on in, I've got to just run out my back checkers and see what happens. Okay, now Myberg rolls a 4-4, which is a pretty good shot. Um, he can't make his 5-point, unfortunately, which is his number one priority. But he does get to do a few things. He takes two checkers and makes his 2-point from the 6. And with the last two fours, he starts his back man moving. Um, the anchor doesn't really play much of a role here for him anymore. Uh, he's not that likely to get hit any time immediately. But he does need to cover the outfield so that when I run off my back anchor, he's got ways to shoot at me. So this is a good constructive move for him. Okay, now I shoot and I roll a 5-3. Now, I need to get my back bend moving, so the 5 is pretty clear. I'm going to play 21 to 16, and I'm just going to say to White, okay, hit me if you can. I've got to try to get home. I'm up over 40 pips in the race. I can't wait around any longer, or my game will fall apart. So I'm coming out. Now, the real problem here is where do I put my 3? And here I made a little bit of a mistake. Um, what I did was I kept the checker going to the midpoint. But the problem with that is it gives White a new good number. Um, he now needs fives to hit that blot. And if you'll notice, fives don't really play very well over here. He can't do that much if he rolls a five on this side. So I would have been a little better off to notice that and just play the three from six to three. On general principles, I didn't like moving this checker down here because it really sets me up to break my board up the next time I can't move my whole number on the other side of the board. But in this case, uh, a lot hinges on the next roll, and it was definitely worth not giving him good fives to play. So I think I made a little bit of a mistake here, but in any event, what I did was continue on from 16 to 13. And Myberg immediately makes me pay for it. He rolls a 4-1 which wouldn't have been a very good roll otherwise, but now, of course, he just hits me here on the 13 point. So I go to the bar, and he moves from 17 to 12, and now I've got to come in again from the bar next turn. And now, unfortunately, it's my turn to dance. Uh, at the beginning of the game, Myberg was dancing a lot with rolls like 6-1 and 6-2. Now I roll a 6-2. And he's got his two point and his six point, so I can't come in. So I'm stuck on the bar for a turn. And Myberg immediately chooses a fine time to exploit that dance. And he takes the cube on two and sends it down to four, puts it on my side. So I've been double to four. I've got to decide whether I want to take this cube or not. Now, at first glance, taking looks pretty risky because I've got one man on the bar, I've got another man back, and I've got to get my men through this whole minefield here of the outer boards where White really right now controls the show, Sometime, somehow get those men home. The good news is I'm 29 pips ahead in the race, so if I can get out, I'm going to win pretty easily. And the other piece of good news is I have a five-point board White has a two-point board. So while it looks like White can do a lot, he's actually got to be fairly careful because if he hits me loose, uh, which he may have to do in order to make progress, a return hit could just win the game for me because White could stay on the bar a long time facing a five-point board. 
So I figured that putting those two things together, the better home board, a 29-pip lead in the race, had to give me some reasonable winning chances. So I took the double, and I'm sure that that's the correct play. So now I own the cube at four. It's Myberg's turn, and uh, he's got a few good numbers, but he rolls uh, one of his less good numbers. He rolls a 5-1. Uh, he actually had a fair number. Most of his fives didn't really do anything. He had a lot of poor shots. So uh, with the 5-1, he elects to bring another builder in. He plays from the 12 point to the 7 point. And then he shuffles this checker here from his 17 point to his 16 point. So he's really just getting ready for next turn. Uh, there isn't too much I can do right now. I'm just focused on trying to come in from the bar. And I roll a great shot, a 5-1. This is really one of my very best. Um, I come in with the 5, of course, and then with the 1, I make the 20 point. Gives me a good anchor and a good jumping off spot because I'm still going to have to be running out here pretty soon. So that 5-1 made me very happy. I took the cube. And now it's White's turn, and he throws a 5-3 which is a very straightforward play. He's only got one thing he can do. He moves from his eight point to his three point with the five, and from the six point to the three point with the three, makes another point in his board. It's good, it's constructive, and there was no other play. Okay, and I shoot a three two. Uh, not a great number, but easy to play. I can't move my back men, so I just take the spare checker on my six, and I move it down to my one point. And absolutely nothing else to do. And now it's Myberg's turn. He rolls mediocre number, 6-1. Doesn't hurt him, doesn't help him much. Uh, he takes one checker on the 7 point, moves it 6 points down to his 1 point. Takes the other checker and moves that 1 pip. So he gets a little better distribution of checkers in case I run out. But otherwise that's just a blah roll. Okay, my turn now, and I roll a 1-1, one, one, double aces. Um, still can't get my back checkers out, so that's not good, but at least I don't really damage my board too much. What I'm going to do with my four ones is move two checkers from the six point down to the four point. So I keep a five point board, although it's now the six point that's open and not the four. Still, that's not a bad shot if I can't get my back checkers out. Now it's Myberg's turn. He rolls a 5-1. Another average minus roll. Um, he can't do much outside, but he can cover the blot on the one point by playing six down to one. So now he's got a four point board. And outside he goes from 16 to 15. Now I can hit that checker with a 10, so it's a little danger, but basically it's still doing its job of covering the outfield. And now I roll a 3-2. Another blah number. I still can't move my back men, which I'm itching to do because I'm still well ahead in the race. And now I do have to start to break up my board. This, in general, when you have to break up a home board position, you want to break it up from the back. So, for example, I could play 3-2 from the 4 point down to the 1 and the 2. But that leaves a gap here, which is a little bit of a weakness. And instead, it's a little better to clear the five point, moving the checkers down to the two and the three. So now I have a four point board, but no gaps in it. That'll be a little stronger and a little better for the bear off. Now, Myberg shoots, and he rolls a six four. And that's a, that's a curiously putrid number. Um, notice he can't move the checker on the 10 point because he's 10 away from my checkers on the 20. So if he moves six, he then has to stay there and leave another blot. Of course, he, he doesn't want to leave a blot here at all because my board is still strong enough to give him some trouble. But <clears throat> he can't move the checker on the 10. He can't move the checkers on the 14. They're six away. Um, if he moved one of those checkers, he'd leave a blot out here on the 14. So the only really semi-constructive way to play this is to move the two checkers on the 17. 
Uh, he moves one of them four pips down to the 21 and the other one six pips down to the 23. At least he gets to start the 21 point and maybe make that in the future. But that was a bad shot for him. Now I'm, I'm itching to come off the 20 point as soon as I can. Uh, I've been thwarted the last uh, three turns, but now not only do I come off it, I come off it with one of my best numbers, 6-4. Uh, and since I'm 10 away from the 10 point, I get to come out first 4 and then 6 and hit that blot. So I jump all the way out, hit my Berg's blot, send it back to the bar, and I'm on my way, hopefully. Now, Myberg shoots, and luckily for me, he rolls a 2-1, so he stays on the bar. And now I'm in very good shape. And now I look at the position, and I notice that there's a lot in my favor here. I'm in the pip count. I'm actually up 32 pips. My pip count is 59. His is 91, so I'm ahead 32 there. That's a big lead. Um, I've gotten one checker out. Uh, this checker should be able to get out pretty easily. Most important, White is going to have to do a couple of things now to win the game. He's going to have to enter and somehow hit a blot somewhere, and then he's going to have to close me out, even though these points here are still open. So that's good enough for me. I take the cube at 4, and I turn it to 8 and give it to him. And, of course, now he has a choice between taking the cube at eight or giving up the game and losing four points, in which case he'd actually be down six nothing in this match to 15. And he decides, I think correctly, that he's better off playing this game for eight points and having a chance to turn the cube back to 16 and maybe put the whole match up for grabs than just settling for a six nothing deficit. So he correctly, I think, takes the cube and we go on from here. Now I roll, and I roll a pretty good number, 6-1. Um, the back checker doesn't move, but the front checker can go to safety with the 6. I play 10-4, to four, so he's safe. Now I only have one checker to worry about. And with the ace, I play just 2-1. to one. Nothing much there. Now it all hinges down to can he come in and can I escape my back checker. Okay, Myberg shoots, and he needs sixes and fives, but unfortunately he rolls a 4-1. Four, four points blocked, one points blocked, so he stays on the bar one more turn. That's very good for me. Now I just need a 3, 4, or 5 to get that checker up. And I shoot. Double fives would be great. Uh, double fours would be pretty darn good. Uh, unfortunately, I get a double six, and since... Point six away is blocked. I can't move at all. So that's really sort of a waste. And now it's Myberg's turn. There's eight points on the line here. He needs a six. He needs a five. He shoots and gets a two one. So he stays on the bar one more time. And again, I've got a chance to roll a three, four, five and get that back checker out. Okay, and I shoot. And I do a little better this time. I roll a 4-2, so he gets partway out. He moves from the 20 to the 16 point, then he's blocked from moving 2. So now with the last 2, I play from the 3 point down to the 1 point. But looking good now. I've only got a couple of more quadrants to get by, and then I'll be home with an easy win. But unfortunately, it's the nature of backgammon. No wins are ever easy, especially when the cube is very, very high. Uh, every game takes a lot of twists and turns, it seems, and the cube gets up big. Myberg rolls a 6-2. Uh, not bad. One of his two best numbers. The other was 5-2. So he comes in with the 6, and with the 2, he puts me back on the bar. Too bad. Okay, and I'm looking to shoot. And I roll a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, and again, I'm blocked. I can't, I can't move. I don't think I've ever played a game where I rolled so many 6-6s six, that didn't help me one bit. Uh, but here's another one. So I'm stuck on the bar for this turn.
Now, at this point, I think Myberg makes a, a fairly serious error. He, I think he should redouble here to 16 and put the whole match on the line. Uh, he's a favorite. He's not an overwhelming favorite, but he's a favorite to cover his four point and then uh, get his checkers around and in before I finally roll a five to enter. So this would be a good time to turn the cube to 16. I would have to take and uh, this the entire match would be up for grabs in this one game but nonetheless I think that's his right choice um, instead he took a roll and he fired a 4-1 which is not bad he moves from the 16 point to the 21 covering that blot and now I come back with a great shot I roll 6-5 enters from the bar and hits this blot here on the 14 point. So it doesn't get any better than that. And there's a huge swing that turns the game, hopefully decisively in my favor this time. Now Myberg shoots. He again is on the bar, needs a 6 or a 5 to enter. This time he rolls a 6-2. That's pretty good. He enters with a 6, making a blocking point here. And with the two, he correctly starts his five point, looking to make a closed board at some point in the, fu in the near future. And now it's my turn, and let's look. If I roll any number that gets me here to my five point, I'm going to win the game easily. Now I'm on the 14, the five is nine away, so I need any roll that's nine or bigger. Uh, six, three, five, four, six, four, six, five and some of the big doubles. Uh, unfortunately, not double fours. Double fours, you'll notice, is actually blocked by this point on the six point here. So if I roll double fours, I just get to play one four and I have to leave a shot. But any of the big numbers will get me home safely. And I shoot and roll six four, which is good enough. I play from the 14 down to the four. And that pretty much wraps up the game. Um, White has some chance of winning. He's actually about a 200 to 1 underdog to pull this out. And in fact, he didn't pull it out. He went on to uh, lose the game, go down. Uh, he lost an eight game, so he, he went down 10 nothing in the match. And eventually I was able to win the match from there. So there's our game. It was a long game, a lot of ups and downs, but a lot of excitement there. Okay, now that actually brings us to the end of this eight-part series on backgammon basics. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. We, we covered a, quite a bit of material here, from very basic stuff at the beginning, how to play the opening roles, how to move the pieces, um, all the way to some interesting games toward the end, and uh, a lot of advice on doubling and playing in the middle game. So I hope you found that useful. Now we're going to be starting up a new series. Uh, you'll start to see the first episodes of that come out pretty soon. And that series is going to be how to play tournament backgammon. We're going to look at a lot of tournament backgammon related issues, um, how to be successful in tournament play. Uh, each session we'll look at a, a, a crucial game in a match, between, usually between two top players. So we'll give you a sense of what good tournament backgammon looks like and how to play well in tournaments as opposed to cash games. So if you play a lot of tournament backgammon online, a lot of matches, uh, you should find this pretty useful. And remember, if you want to play online backgammon, uh, try the site Black Chip Poker, which is part of the Merge Network. Uh, they do accept American players, and you can sign up here through the My Account page. And don't forget to sign up for Rakeback when you join. Until then, this is Bill Roberti signing off for Drag the Bar.